Well, hi, and welcome to my shop, and thank you for joining me here today. Uh, now, the last video ended with a very disappointing result when I tuned the uh, radio after I thought I followed all those instructions in the end pretty good on aligning it, but uh, broadcast band not working well at all. So in thinking about this, uh, I think I may not have tested all the tubes in this radio yet, and now would be a good time to do it since the poor performance could be uh, tube related. So I did take care of the 3V4 output tube. I know that one's good, but the rest of them, I don't think I tested them. So that's what we're going to do first thing, test the tubes before we go any further. Okay, so I guess we'll, we'll just start with uh, 1U5 here. Five, working right on it. And just play through the tester here. One e five. One e five. Two part two. One point five. So first we're testing a diode. No, wait, I'm sorry. First we're not testing a diode. First we're testing a triode. Two. Minus of zero. Seven three four hundred. Seven three four hundred. Fifty six hundred. Forty one. That's correct. Let's see. Reject point is 410, so on the meter, that's just, we have to come up about this high. Pass the test. Okay, let's just double check before I plug it in. 1.5, 2, 0, 3, See, so there's a indication that we'll see a short when the short test is rotated all the way to test number one. Okay, fire, fire on. There we go. Let it warm up for a moment. Okay, short test. So this meter becomes a very uh, good ohm meter during in, in this tester. So we're actually reading. Uh, we should go all the way here. Yep. Two test fine for shorts. And, uh, so we're doing a diode. So the diode only has to come up past this diode. It's okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that might explain things right there. Just double check. Any time a tube comes up bad, I say to myself, well, probably something's wrong with the test. I'm going to just be sure. Yeah, you know what? I'm mixing up two tests at once. That's what I'm doing here. Bozo. GM. There we are. So it's well up above the uh, 410. More like 650 there. Okay, don't make a mistake. Check on these tubes. There we go. Okay, so we're doing the diode this time. 700. Let me just turn this off. 700. Sensitivity. This is really the cheater control for the designers of the uh, tube checker. A. Same thing on shorts. We see a short on pin one or on setting one here. This time we're doing the diode. It just has to come above the, uh, the, the diode setting there. I'm bang my camera here. Probably. Okay, short test. Shouldn't be any different than the last time, I would think. 
Now we're testing the diode just above the diode's OK line. So this tube tests just fine. That's the one U5. So I'll stick that back in the radio. We'll do the there's two one U4s in here. Let me get one out. I think this might be a one U4. Let's see. What did I pull out? The one U4. Okay, one U4. test 1.5 signal 2 by 0 7340k 7340k 5600 5600 4 23 C, F, K1, K2, two, two tests, K1, K2, okay, quick double check, 1.520, 7340K, 7340K, 5600, 43, okay, C, we're good. There we go. Oh, I'm not, not, not quite so good yet. It would be better if we do this. Now, did I by some chance? <laughs> oh, so there's been bird singing all this time. Okay. I just, I just put on my headphones here. I didn't really, I left the birds singing. Well, let's carry on even though it's a really gray, lousy, rainy, snowy, yucky day outside. Oh, I should have had my headphones on all this time. K1, 580. Should just be above the 5 here. Way above. K2, this tube tests very good. I guess it's a little repetitive here on the bird singing, so let's try something else. Now we'll throw a little water in. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put this tube back in the radio here. And the other one you for. I think I've got some storm sounds. We can always put on storm sounds here. If this starts going downhill, I'll switch to storm sounds. That's normal. Four. Five eight. Very good. Other. Not quite so good, but good. Well above the uh, limit. So these tubes are very good. That's not really what I'm hoping for. In, in a way, I'm hoping to find some bad tubes in here. That would perhaps answer some questions. Okay, let's try this one. Right out of the tuner here. This is the 1L6. 1L6. Five 
five, two. The sound of that water is making me want to go to the washroom. Actually. <laughs> Six, three, four, five, four. Six, three, four, five, four. Fifty-seven hundred. Seven hundred. One L six. Twenty-three. C. Same thing as short on setting one. Should show up. 360. Uh, this is way down here. It's only got to get to 360. Okay. Oh, get the two, Is that qualify as a bad, bad tube now, or is that... Wow. Okay, so we're getting a short in setting 5. If I look in the book, I can figure out what this short actually is. Why don't we do that? Yeah, it's not a short circuit. I think a short circuit would throw it right over. Okay, let me grab the book here. Let's take a look. Let's see what's up. the manual that comes with the uh, tester. Interestingly enough, property of CFOX radio, January 29th, 1960. So here, so what we're looking for is the leak, leakage resistance. 0 to 10 mega ohms with an accuracy of plus or minus 10% at the 250 k mark. Okay, it's, a, it's a rough 0 to 10 mega ohms. So that's what this is reading, 0 to 10 mega ohms. You can see if they have a scale on here, but they do. Okay, so I'm kind of reading this the other way around. So the very, very high resistance shows up way down here. So this is showing up as 5 mega ohms on the meter. Now what does it say about the test? Is it saying anything there about doing the test? This is leakage test, so let's go further. It's going to say somewhere. It's going to talk about this. Operating instructions. Leakage test. Leakage testing is controlled by the leakage test switch, which in its numbered positions disconnects all of the tube elements from the other testing, element, testing circuits and connects them into a leakage test circuit. The meter deflection in each switch position is indicative of the resistance between the isolated element and all other elements in the tube. For this circuit, the meter deflection is inversely proportional to the leakage current. At full scale, reading indicates zero resistance as marked on the meter scale. Resistances as high as 10 mega ohms can be measured. And we're measuring 5 mega ohms. The element checked for any position of the leakage test which is shown as below. So we're in position 5. Position 5 is control grid and all other elements. So we're reading the resistance through the two between the control grid and everything else. So we don't really know what it's what it's shorting to, although do we get another reading on another setting? So this actually does number one, heater and cathode, number two, suppressor grid, all other elements, plate, all other elements, screen, all other elements, control grid, all other elements. That's pretty straightforward. They could, they could have actually put little codes on here. Or that. 
thing. Control grid leakage to one of the other elements. That's totally consistent. It's just not. Oh, well, it's not totally consistent. It's a problem with testing a tube with a leak in it like that too. Wait a minute. Didn't I set the? Uh, did I set the uh, no, everything is set for this too. Double check just to be sure. Six, three, four, five, four, five, seven, zero, zero. Yeah, everything's set for this too. So no leak on any other setting except for one. Good. It's right in the 360 range. So I might want to put another 1L6 here, but my understanding is these are rare tubes, 1L6s. 1L6. Okay, you know what? Hit a turn to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Things are dying here. That's what that indicates. out of the radio. Okay, we'll take the other tube here. One you I don't want this to hurt. That, that's crazy stuff. There we are. Thunderstorms. Thunderstorms is right. So these are all my one volt tubes here. I don't have a lot of them. The very last tube I checked is a 1L6. So maybe this will be the savior here. Let's see what happens. 1L6. Absolutely sure it's a 1L6. Yeah. Come on, tube. things here. See, okay. Here we go. So no leak on setting 5 at all. So it's definitely a different operating tube. 1L6. 360. Okay, it's much better in two regards. 1L6 is a pretty important uh, tube in the radio. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the 1L6 here, and uh, dotted line again indicates the tuner chassis box. If you like that, that big tumbler is rolling around inside. These are sitting on top of the box, these two tubes. So this is a guy who has a leak between the grid and the rest. Now there's two grids in this tube, so you know there's five. There's only uh, five short settings, and there's there's more combinations here. So exactly how they tested this tube when they say grid leak, I don't know. Uh, grid to grid leak, who knows? Something in here anyway. But this tube's critical, of course, in the operation of the radio. As it's taking in the signal from the antenna, it's taking in the uh, signal uh, from the local oscillator, it's mixing it in this tube, and then uh, firing it on out into the IF over here. This is a critical tube. So let's change it and see if suddenly the radio works better. Okay, I think we're ready to give the radio another try with its nice new 1L62, and we'll find out just what kind of difference that might have made, if any. So what band are we on now? We're on we're on band seven, according to that. The switch is off. The and uh, we have no extraneous antenna connection. My indoor my, my, my outdoor antenna is connected to this white loop. 
which is hanging around this resonant coil here that we can fool with if we wish. But really we're dependent just on the antenna in here. The last time I did this, I don't think I picked up a single station. So we're gonna find out what happens this time. So power on. Switch on. Yeah, ooh, it's even louder. Okay. Let's see if I can get rid of that snap in here. Not really. Of course, I'll have to put up with that interference. Come on, baby. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the radio. I'm going to lay it down flat so the antenna is in its usual orientation. I'm take this gizmo off here so I can do that. okay still volume down power on it's a little better Six eighty at six eighty, six forty at six forty, five ninety at where it should be. Okay, let's go for the big one. Oh, seven forty. This is actually working fairly well. I'm going to put the bad tube in right now and see what the difference is. I wrote leak on it, but see, I didn't throw it out. I won't throw it out. 
Someday there'll be a radio in here with a dead tube, and I'll be able to put that leaky one in and make it work. So I think this is the 1L6 here. 1L6. Let's put the bad guy in. I won't touch the radio, you know, tuning adjustments or anything. We'll just see if this really was a problem. Or, you know, reorienting the radio may have just fixed all of its weaknesses. <laughs> I had the antenna the wrong way. Radio is not built to be on its side. Okay, old tube test. So what the heck is that? I have no idea what that noise what that noise is. It comes and goes like that. I'm gonna guess it's a fan motor and some kind of static on a belt or something. I don't know. I don't have any such thing in my house, but So we're doing pretty good here actually. What's the whole lesson here? Well, the lesson is I shouldn't have these radios up on their sides and you know, reoriented their antenna vertically and expect them to work well. Hey, it's, there's room here for another experiment. Let us do it. 